Happy Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lady. I uh, am pleased to be with you, to, to pray with you, and just to present a few words to you, uh, a few simple words about this great feast and really about uh, how Mary should be living in our life as a disciple of Jesus. So what, how does discipleship look uh, when we love Our Lady and we follow her example? Let's start with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Annunciation, pray for us. <clears throat> so I was in uh, Quebec uh, one summer for a vacation. I go away with five other priests uh, every summer. And so I was in Quebec and uh, I found a, a nice little church to do a holy hour uh, every, every morning. And um, like you, uh, priests get distracted <laughs> in prayer. So I was literally just looking around, and it's not really a distraction. You see why you have artwork um, in a church. And so I was looking around, and I noticed a a, um, a painting, or, or a stained glass window, rather. And in the stained glass window was, was a picture of a, a priest uh, dressed in very traditional uh, uh, garments, uh, vestments, rather. And he was giving a communion uh, to a woman who was who was kneeling. And uh, I was trying to figure out what saint that could have been, and it was um, in my mind, and I couldn't really figure it out. And so at the end of my holy hour, I was just wandering around the church, and, and there was a little pamphlet uh, explaining what all the artwork was in the church. Very beautiful, beautiful church in Quebec. And what it was, it was the disciple John uh, giving the Blessed Mother uh, the Blessed Sacrament. And... <laughs> I don't know, it, at that moment, it just, <clears throat> it filled my heart, this, this scene, which presumably did happen. The, the beloved disciple John was uh, given Our Lady to take care of, and, and John, as, a, as an apostle and a bishop and a priest, would have celebrated the Eucharist and would have given Mary... Uh, the Eucharist. I mean, it's just a really beautiful, um, amazing thing to reflect upon. And think of the magnitude uh, and humility and wonder and awe at the same. Jesus, who had given Mary, who had given Jesus his flesh and blood. Mary, who had raised the child Jesus to manhood. Mary, who stood by her son in his passion and death. Mary, who supported the shaky faith of the early disciples in the upper room at the Pentecost. Mary, who is, who is the disciple, the number one disciple we have, is Our Lady. Mary, she humbly kneels before her Son, our Lord and Savior, to receive Him in the Holy Eucharist. So, the way it was depicted, I'm not sure it, it happened in exactly that manner, but, but the truth is this, is that the faith and adoration that Mary shows and showed is a model for us, is a model for us. Mary teaches us to have faith. Mary teaches us to have faith, teaches us to adore Jesus, teaches us to be humble. There's so much we can learn from Our Lady. And brothers and sisters, don't ever doubt this, that Mary is a tremendous asset in our journey to Jesus. That Mary is a tremendous asset in our journey to Jesus. So when we have a relationship with Mary, when we honor her and when we learn from her, she brings us to Jesus. The great saints uh, knew this, or all the saints knew this, really. And, and the saints really understood this. St. Louis de Montfort, uh, who had a, obviously a tremendous uh, and true devotion to Mary, says this, the greatest saints, those richest in grace and virtue, will be most assiduous in praying to the most blessed virgin, 
looking up to her as a perfect model to imitate and as a powerful helper to assist them. So don't take my word for it. Uh, I am not a great saint, but St. Louis de Montfort is a great saint. So listen to him and take Mary as a model to imitate. St. John Vianney, <clears throat> the patron saint of parish priest and an incredibly holy man, said this, Jesus Christ, after having given us all he could give, that is to say the merit of his toils, his sufferings, and his bitter death, and after having given us his adorable body and blood to be the food of our souls, willed also to give us the most precious thing he had left, which was his Holy Mother. So, after the Eucharist and the sacraments, uh, Mary is the most precious thing that we have. Jesus gave us everything, his body and blood, his soul and divinity, and we see right at the end of his life on the cross, he, he gives Mary not just to John, but to all of us. So it's up to us to take the gift, to behold the gift, to be in wonder and awe of the gift, and to learn from that. Saint Maximilian Kolbe, another saint that had a tremendous uh, relationship with Our Lady and devotion, said this, Never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. Never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You can never love her more than Jesus did. And so, you know, it's a beautiful line. Sometimes we can be hesitant, you know, feel like we're somehow taking away from Jesus by having a devotion to Mary. And it, it's just the opposite, and we'll talk about that, that Mary actually points us to Jesus. Mary points us to Jesus. John Paul II, who also had just a tremendous devotion to um, Our Lady, a tremendous devotion, said this, Mary became not only the nursing mother of the Son of Man, but also the associate of unique nobility of the Messiah and Redeemer. Uh, Mary is unique in her motherhood and her virginity, uh, which is fused, if you will. And so we give honor to Jesus when we give honor to Mary. And that's a point that John Paul II says over and over again. We give honor to Jesus when we give honor to Mary. And so we'll talk about a little bit, uh, that's just by way of introduction, um, a little bit of, of Mary in, the, in our life of faith and the response of a disciple and, and how does a disciple respond. We just gave a couple of beautiful quotes and examples from saints, but we're all called to be saints. We're all supposed to model that. And so um, how do we do that? What I'd like you to think about in this um, short uh, talk is to think of it as, as kind of like a little mini a 20 minute retreat. So uh, dispose your heart to receive from God. And whenever we do that, God will uh, sometimes touch the heart in certain ways. So if you're drawn even just a little bit to any certain phrase or talk or idea or, or whatever it may be, take note of that. In fact, you might even want to take notes. The nice thing about having something on video, you can just hit the pause button <laughs> and go get something to, to write on. Um, and that can be some food for your prayer, um, not just today, but in this coming uh, week, uh, little points that you can meditate on, because often uh, God wants to draw out what he's placed in your heart. So an idea, a whisper, um, a phrase is placed in your heart, and it moves your heart. Well, Jesus doesn't want it to be just that one moment. He wants to uh, really spread it out um, and to dive deeper into that. So I'd like to go over um, just four points. Four places where we witness the faith of Mary. Four places where we witness the faith of Mary in scriptures and how she leads us to ever deeper faith in our own life. So the first is the Annunciation. The Annunciation, which is the feast that we celebrate today. The Annunciation is where Mary says yes to God. A, a huge yes to to God. And it's when we first hear of Mary in the scriptures 
uh, revealing about her who is full of grace. We have to remember that Mary was uh, practically a child, uh, and she was given an, inc an incredible task, uh, a frightening task, really, a responsibility that we can only imagine what it was like. Right? You are to be the mother of God. She's what, like 13, 14, you know, no pressure, no pressure, but, you know, a lot is relying on your yes. And so Mary comes through for all of us uh, and for the Lord. She, um, with great humility and, and deep ascent, uh, deep ascent gives her, her yes to God. Father Raniero Cantalamesa uh, writes in a, which is a really wonderful book. It's called Mary, Mirror of the Church. Mary, Mirror of the Church by Raniero uh, Cantalamesa. And he writes this, that the words of Mary, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. We know those words from the Gospel of Luke. He says those words, now get this, are the greatest and most decisive act of faith to ever take place in the history of the world. The greatest and most decisive act of faith to ever take place in the history of the world. And then he talks about what um, the theologian Origen said, that it's as if Mary were saying to God, Behold, I am the tablet to be written on. Let the writer write whatever he wills. So this beautiful image of, of Mary as a tablet, and that God could write whatever he wants on her heart. And as she gave him this permission, this full union with God, this beautiful yes um, that uh, was given to our Lord. And so in short, Mary's yes was full, complete, pure. It's just an inspiring example for us. An example for us to try and be a tablet. So we can imagine ourselves and our heart uh, like a tablet and say, Lord, just, just write whatever you want on there. You know, lead me in your life. Let me have the grace to say yes again and again and again. As many of you know, I spent 17 years of my priesthood um, as a vocation director and a, a, a rector of the seminary. So I spent years and years and years of walking with men who were um, trying to figure out this thing that was happening in their heart. Like God had written something in their heart. It's not their idea. Um, God had written something in their heart, and, and that writing was priesthood. <laughs> like, written, they were the tablet, and the writing was priesthood. And it's a pretty uh, scary thing and, a, and an extraordinary thing to be feel like you're called to the priesthood. So please, please pray for the men that are in the seminary. It's, it's not easy to fully assent to the yes. It, it takes a little while uh, in a man's heart. But one of the things that uh, certainly is true is that if that uh, writing of priesthood is from God, you know, and uh, that the, the, the result in your life will be one of great joy, um, a, a great joy. So, and that's not true just for the priest, but for anything in life that God is asking us to do. It may be hard. It may seem like a struggle. Uh, we may be filled with all sorts of counter messages. But if we say yes to God, the ultimate uh, gift is that... <laughs> It will make our heart more free, our life more full, and, and more joyful. It doesn't mean we don't have crosses. It doesn't mean that life is not a struggle. But our yes to God um, has a benefit for us. And that's a, a deeper joy, a deeper freedom, um, a deeper sense of love in the heart. And so that's the great example that Mary gives us. So a point for your meditation, maybe to take with you, um, is ask God to reveal where your yes has been full. Like where God wrote something on your heart and you knew it and you said yes. It could be yes to, to, to a marriage. It could be yes to a, um, a, a ministry that you gave in the church. It could be yes to little things. When God was calling you to serve someone and, and you didn't want to, but like you knew you had to and you did it. And, uh, and where that bore fruit in your life. But also uh, where your yes is not full. Like, where is your yes not completely full? And we all have those uh, in our own life, um, myself included, that we're not fully giving uh, our yes. So where is the? where are those? And beg him to give you the strength and courage uh, 
to follow him like Mary do. So use Mary did use Mary's intercession. So we beg God, right? But then we've learned from Mary. So we 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 ask her intercession. Say, Mary, you know, help me have my yes like your yes. I see your example. I see your love. You know, fill my heart uh, with your love. So we kind of put Mary on the team, right? I always uh, tell people to like, make her the captain of the team. <laughs> like she is the captain of your intercessory or whatever your desires and wants, and she will take your desires and present them to the Lord in, in a really perfected way. You might want to um, pray a prayer uh, on a regular basis. It's the Memorare. Uh, it's a really beautiful prayer. It's a, it's a classic prayer um, in Catholicism and Christianity. And um, you can look it up, but it's a good one to pray every day. I, I, I pray it every day in the morning. And it goes like this if you don't know it, but if you do know it, pray it with me. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. So in everything that I give, I give uh, with the help of Our Lady. Everything I desire, everything God desires of me. The second um, point uh, in Scripture is, is in the infancy narratives where Mary is shown to be a woman of prayer and contemplation. That Mary prays. That she is a, a prayer, and she would have prayed before she had Jesus, uh, after, during. Uh, she was a, a woman in constant prayer. I don't know if any of you have been on a, a pilgrimage, but uh, a pilgrimage is a great uh, blessing. And uh, at some point in your life, if you haven't and you can, um, it's good to go on pilgrimage, even places that, that are close to you. It doesn't have to be far away, but you take a day, you take a couple of days away, and just to be with the Lord out of the busyness of life. Uh, my journey to Christ and the priesthood was greatly aided by a pilgrimage to um, Medjugorje in 1989, uh, to a Marian uh, shrine. And um, it was an, an amazing uh, experience. And so when we take time away, uh, it can often change our heart. Um, and so you are taking time right now uh, to listen uh, to uh, some words that can maybe help you in your journey to Christ. And in, in that sense, it's kind of like a little pilgrimage. A little retreat maybe is, is a better way to put it. But I just want you to know that, that Jesus and, and Mary are very, really happy that you are taking the time to listen to this. Not to me. Not to me. This has nothing to do with me. It's about uh, you taking the time to learn something about the importance of Our Lady, to learn something about how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. And um, it's a great blessing. And I just wanted to let you know that Jesus is happy with that. <laughs> that Our Lady is extremely happy with that. And um, they, are, they are with me. The Lord is with me, behind me in the Blessed Sacrament. Our Lady is, is here. Um, and, and she is uh, bringing her love to you. So... Mary is, um, Mary prays, right? And uh, we see her uh, prayer um, in, uh, oh, I'm a little bit lost, I'm going to get to that later. Okay, um, so how much time do we spend in prayer? That's what I wanted to say next. <laughs> how much time do we want to, how much time do we spend in prayer? And what is the quality of that time? Uh, those are just two things to reflect on, a little self-examination. So, uh, we all, I'm sure everyone watching this spends time in prayer. And I'm sure some of you spend an awful lot of time in prayer. But um, in reality, how much time do we spend? But more, what is the, the quality of that, that prayer? And that's what we want to get at um, in our life of prayer, that it's, it's time and time well spent and a lot of time. Uh, we often can make a list of things that I do and, and compare that to how much time I spend in prayer. And, and this time in prayer should grow in our life. It should grow in our life because it's what we're going to be doing in heaven, uh, eternally praising God. And so in, in this life, we want, to, we want to have that grow and have that quality and intimacy with the relationship grow. And so um, I say this <clears throat> a lot, but a personal relationship with God um, 
with Christ is of the utmost importance. And uh, somebody once said that prayer is not a matter of time, but a matter of love. And so if we love someone, if we love someone, we will spend time with them. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI said this, Faith does not simply provide information about who Christ is, but rather it entails a personal relationship with Christ, a surrender of our whole person. So faith is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, and he goes on to say, so Jesus' question, but who do you say that I am, is ultimately a challenge to the disciples to make a personal decision in this regard. Who do you say that I am? Where, what, what is our relationship like? It's, it's personal. It's personal. And faith in Christ and discipleship are connected. Faith in Christ and being disciple are connected. <clears throat> he goes on, and since faith involves following the Master, it must become constantly stronger, deeper and more mature, to the extent that it leads to a closer and more intense relationship with Jesus. And so, uh, this is the whole idea of prayer, that my relationship is growing, it's deepening, and it's becoming a, a constant in my life. And he goes on to say that none had a more intimate relationship with Christ than Mary. None had a more intimate relationship with Christ than Mary, and that continues today. And um, yeah, that's just a true statement. So <laughs> just let that sit in your heart. She had a she, she's number one, number number one. She's the mom. Uh, she's the she's the model for all of us. The second chapter of Luke portrays two moments we know Mary to be a contemplative. She takes things happening in her life and she places them in her heart to be pondered with God. After the visit of the shepherds during the birth of Christ, we read, And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. After the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple, the scripture states, He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. So Mary took the, the events in her life, the, her, her relationships, her things happening, and she reflected on them in relating them to God. Relating them to God. And that's a very simple thing that we can do, that we have all this stuff happening in our life, right? Well, do we relate it to God? Do we take it from our heart um, and, and talk to the Lord about it? So relating all the things in our life, the good, the bad, the ugly, and bringing them to the Lord. And so um, her, her life of faith was forged in her time of prayer. And, and this is an example we really should and must follow. Her life of faith was forged um, through prayer. I want to encourage you to pray the rosary. Um, it's a really important prayer. And uh, it's a Trinitarian prayer. It really focuses on the life of Christ, um, God the Father. We pray in our Father all the time. We have this, this call of the Holy Spirit to come upon us and to enlighten us. And it follows the life of Christ. Um, and it's scriptural. We, we, we say scripture, blessed, you know, blessed are you among women. That is scripture. And uh, it's such an important prayer. And we, we walk with Jesus in his life with Mary. Um, so Our Lady of Fatima uh, said this, pray the rosary. She said this on May 13, 1917, pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war. She said this on October 13th, I am Our Lady of the Rosary. Continue to say the rosary every day. Every day. Every day, are we listening to mom? Are we listening to mom? I mean, we need to pray the rosary every day. And, and that's not just for priests and religious, that's for everyone. And we should pray the rosary in our homes. The, the Holy Family has a special place in, in our church. You see that image of the Holy Family in the church. Uh, which we all miss seeing right now, don't we? The beautiful, you know, baby Jesus out there is the cutest thing. Um, it, it, it's really, um, 
very important to recognize that that, that holy family prayed as a family. Um, and so an encouragement, brothers and sisters, to the family rosary, all your families listening out there, your moms, moms and dad, um, experience the rosary within the family. And you can start with just a decade, you know, and uh, I know you got little ones and crazy and like, I'm not, I'm not telling you how to do it. <laughs> I'm, how you're doing it, not me. But, um, but prayer in the family is critical and moms and dads, your role is to teach your kids how to pray. And so they should learn how to pray the rosary in that way. And I know, I know many of you do. And many of you in this parish are just a tremendous. You're, you're prayer warriors. You're awesome. Many of you pray the rosary and devoted. So I'm just kind of reaching out to those that maybe have sort of lost the habit of it. Or, or parents that have said, you know, I really don't pray with the family. Like, dads, come on, be Joseph. Moms, be Mary. You know, this is, this is the model that we're looking for. And it will bring a lot of fruit to your life um, and a lot of grace. And so uh, Joseph is not just uh, the carpenter, but he's a mystic teaching Jesus about the love of the Father. And, and, and so we want to, we really want to be good men of prayer, good women of prayer. So uh, the points for meditation, is my life of prayer all that it should be? Do I have a contemplative heart? Do I seek ways to renew the relationship? Um, and that's an important point. We always have to renew the relationship. It's, it's the kind of dynamic of, of prayer. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. But hopefully the, the trend is kind of that way in our deepening of our life of contemplation. So if I am a parent, do I lead the family in prayer? Perhaps we could uh, make a genuine commitment to spend a little more time in prayer to ponder the mystery of Christ um, in us like Mary. Third, uh, the wedding feast at Cana. Mary points us to Jesus. Mary points us to Jesus. In John chapter 2, the wedding feast at Cana. Uh, you remember what happens. They're having a wedding and they run out of wine. And what do they do? They go to mom. Right? So, like mom, will, mom knows what to do. And what does Mary do? She says, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. It is the quintessential uh, to Jesus through Mary. To Jesus through Mary. Catholic weddings often have a dedication to Mary. You've seen this and it's, it's really quite beautiful. And, I, and I, I love it when they do. And when they do, I said, hey, why don't you um, at that moment consecrate your marriage uh, to Jesus through Mary? Why don't you make a consecration? Maybe write something out, have a prayer, but, but have this act where you're consecrating your union to Jesus through Mary. And that beautiful teaching moment is what I explain, uh, what they're doing, is that they're saying, you know, Jesus is King. You know, Jesus is Lord. But we all help each other on the journey to faith. Everyone here. Everyone helps each other. That's the way it goes. But there's one... Uh, that is unique in that help. Um, there's one that can say they're the mother of God. There's just one, and that's that's Mary. And so as they as they walk, I'm kind of explaining, uh, walk over to the statue of Our Lady, that this is what they're doing, but it's also what we should be doing. Mary wants nothing more than to lead us to the heart of her son. Mary does not want the attention. Mary wants us to find Jesus, her son, and she will help us find Jesus, her son. Because her heart is so pure and immaculate, and because she holds a special place in heaven as queen and mother, she is very, very effective at leading us to Jesus. She is very effective at leading us to Jesus. And we started this uh, reflection with that image of um, Mary receiving from the disciple John. Um, and there's many saints that talk about Mary's love for the Eucharist. And it's not something we always think about, but St. Uh, Peter Julian uh, Imard had this intense devotion to, to Mary and an intenser devotion to, to Eucharist. Uh, that's a word. <clears throat> and he wrote this about Mary's profound devotion uh, for the Eucharist. He says, Mary knew too that it was the mission of the Holy Spirit to extend and perfect in the hearts of men 
the reign of Jesus Christ. So Mary knew it was the mission of the Holy Spirit to, to make Jesus reign in their hearts. Mary knew that. And she knew that the church had been founded only to give Jesus to the world. So why do we have a church? To give Jesus to the world. That's a very simple way to put it, and a very beautiful way to put it. We have a church to give Jesus to the world. He goes on to say, All Mary's desire then was to make him known in his sacrament. All Mary's desire then was to make him known in his sacrament. Her intense love for Jesus felt the need of expanding in this way of consecrating itself as a kind of relief, as it were, because of her own inability to glorify him as much as she desired. So even Mary couldn't glorify Jesus as much as she desired. And so she has this intense love uh, to have her son glorified in the hearts for, of others. And so if you've had someone in your life, maybe it's like your mom or something, that all she wanted was for you to be faithful, like to Jesus and the church and whatever. And so my mom was like that. Uh, wow. Like that was her number one desire. Like you knew it. <clears throat> that was it. That's what she wanted. She wanted you to love Jesus. She wanted you to make sure the church had a place so that you could be led to Jesus. And she had a great devotion to Our Lady. Um, but like she, my mom did that well, but nothing compared to Our Lady who desires that so much more and fulfills that so much more. And so it's this kind of cool thing that happens when we get close to Our Lady um, in the proper way, right? That, that it's, it's led to Jesus, right? Mary is nothing compared to God, but, but she leads us to Him. Mary helped me very much in my own life. I won't, I won't give my, my, my story here, but I went, in, in two years, I went from being a marginal Catholic, like a bad Catholic, is a better way to put it, to a seminarian. So I went from uh, August of 89 to, to August of 91. I was practically not even practicing my faith. And, and in two years, I was on a flight to Rome uh, to study for the priesthood. It was an extraordinary journey. <laughs> and Mary, you know, she was like, huge part of it and, and, and she she led me to her son and, and for that I'm incredibly grateful and so we want to all <clears throat> consecrate our hearts to Jesus through Mary uh, John Paul II he uh, did the total consecration according to Louis de Montfort and it completely changed his relationship with Mary and subsequently his relationship with uh, with Christ. We see that uh, behind me here is the uh, totus tuus. It's, um, it's the image that he put up uh, in St. Peter's Square, um, the Mater Ecclesiae. And uh, he, after he was shot in, in, um, in St. Peter's Square and recovered, he really, really felt it was uh, through the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima. And he wanted to put something in the square to, to honor that. And, and, and that is what it looks like. Um, and you can look it up and, and, and hear the story. It's really quite beautiful. The total consecration is a great spiritual practice. Um, and I know it's been done in our parish, um, but I encourage you to, to do it. There's many different forms of it. Um, the total consecration of Jesus um, through Mary. And, and so you might want to uh, think about doing that. So our point for meditation on this is to give your heart to Jesus through Mary. Consider consecrating all you do to Jesus through Mary and do the total consecration at some point. The final uh, scene that we have is Mary at the cross, that Mary suffers with and for Jesus. Uh, one of my favorite uh, scenes in the Passion of the Christ is the, the moment where Jesus meets his mother. It's the fourth um, station of the cross, and it's done so, so beautifully. Um, and it portrays this this real deep inner struggle of Mary to see her son uh, suffer so horrifically as he walks to, to Calvary. It, it is a great cross for a mother to see a son uh, die and to suffer. And so uh, it, it, it cuts back to a scene where Jesus falls as a little boy, as a little boy, and Mary, Mary uh, runs 
uh, to to take care of him and to embrace him and to to hold him. Um, and it's it's so beautiful, and, and it cuts then back to to Jesus encountering his his mother and and this beautiful scene of the of, of the of the bloody and, and and bruised Jesus encountering his mother, and Jesus says, "See, mother, I I make all things new." If you do not cry at that scene, there's something wrong with you. It, I, I can't watch it without just just weeping. It's it's the most beautiful thing. But but the point is that Mary runs to console her son, but Mary suffers with Jesus, right? Mary suffers with Jesus and for the great work he is accomplishing. Mary is is horrified by the suffering, but she runs to Jesus in faith. Um, and that's us. Mary was with Jesus in his suffering and, and offered all her sufferings for um, Jesus' work of salvation, and so can we. And so in our life, we experience suffering. And, and some of us experience really great suffering, and some of us are experiencing suffering right now. Um, it's, it's something that's difficult. So even for Our Lady, to see, to see suffering and to embrace suffering was, is a very difficult thing. But Jesus has redeemed suffering, and we get a chance to participate in that. So my suffering is not meaningless. So all you suffering out there, listen to me. Okay, Jesus is with you. Look at the cross. Jesus knows your suffering. He suffered before you, and he suffered worse than you, so you knew that you would not be alone. Um, Jesus allows us an opportunity to be unified with him in a particular way through our suffering, so that, that we experience what Jesus experienced. And so in that, we've experienced something together. And Jesus is not apart from us in this. In fact, he's closer to those who suffer than we can possibly imagine. And that's the great lie that's instilled in our hearts when we suffer, that somehow Jesus is apart from us, and he doesn't care for us, and he doesn't love us. And that's a lie that needs to be rejected. And so our suffering is always a challenge. I'm not saying it's not. It's, it's hard. I mean, we all suffer, and it is hard. But it's a consolation and much easier to endure suffering knowing that our Lord suffered before us um, and for our salvation. So Jesus is not apart from us when we suffer. He is closer. And so what you want to do is offer your suffering. Um, and it can be just a little act. And you can offer it for people, for yourself, for the world, for an end to the coronavirus, for whatever it may be. And, and say, Jesus, you know, take this suffering and use it for your grace and, and your glory. And so... Um, we look to Mary as, as an example. She ran to Jesus, um, not away from him in suffering. And she used her suffering as a means for salvation. So uh, a point for, for meditation is pour out your hearts to the Savior and look at the cross. Jesus is with you in your suffering. And this is the great lesson our faith teaches us. And the example Mary gives us to find Jesus in all things, including our suffering. So just... Um, just look at the cross and, 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 and bring your suffering before him and say, and say I'm not going to run from you, Jesus, in this. I'm going to run to you, and I'm going to find you in it. And, and when you do, uh, yeah, like things happen that are really beautiful in your heart. And um, there are people that have said, you know, I, 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 I don't rejoice in my suffering because it's hard, but I'd never take it away from me because I got closer to Jesus in that. And, uh, and then I was able to help others in their own suffering. So what we receive as a gift in our suffering, a hard gift, a very hard gift, we can then give and help others who go through their own suffering. And then we're going to have an experience of that, that we can help them and gently um, uh, have them help them find Jesus, just like you did, right? And, but it was hard, right? <laughs> like you, you hope you had some help from others. But our Lady is right there to help us too because she went through it. So we can turn to the Mother too and to have her kind of wrap us in her mantle of love and comfort. Um, and you think about it, when you're scared, you know, you, you, you want comfort from someone else. And so we pray that uh, our, our, our Lady can do that. So just a thought um, to close with. <clears throat> There's a beautiful image of, of Pentecost uh, by Titian. And uh, it's worth looking up, and it's, it's Mary in the midst of all the disciples, right? Mary in the midst of all the disciples, she's right in the center, and, and the fire of the Holy Spirit is coming upon them. But Mary is the one at the center, and um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, 
to, to see that, that Mary at the center is guiding the rest of the disciples because she's the, the number one disciple. And, and that's the whole point. And we see that in the back of the National Shrine where we have this relief in the back, right, of the call to holiness. And there is Mary really um, at the, the center. And, and Mary expands the love of Jesus in our hearts. Mary expands the love of Jesus in our hearts. That's what she does, does and that's what uh, she loves to do. Again, everything is going to be towards Jesus as the center, and Mary helps us um, bring our hearts to her. So may our hearts always burn with love for Jesus. May, may it truly increase our life of faith. And may we look at Mary as this beautiful um, relationship of love uh, of a mother, uh, who loves us dearly. And, and so when we, we take on Mary and, and we walk our journey to Christ with her, like somehow she's leading us in the right direction. She's leading us in the right direction. So uh, pray your rosaries, pray your memorares. Um, spend time like studying Mary in the, in the scriptures and, and just get close to her because uh, she will lead you uh, to Jesus. And let's um, close once again with the Hail Mary. Um, and uh, we just thank Our Lady for her Annunciation and a great yes. And I pray you have a beautiful solemnity and, and take some time and, and, and pray uh, with Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God bless you all, and I am praying for you um, very earnestly in these days. God bless you.